Hi everyone. Today let's talk about impedance audiometry. I am Dr. N. Harish Kumar, ENT surgeon. Okay. So coming to impedance audiometry, the first thing that we have to really, you know, impress upon is that it is an objective test. Till now we were talking about Renin's test or the tuning fork test and the and the Puton audiometry. Okay, tuning fork test and Puton audiometry. Both of these require the response from the patient. So we need the response from the patient. So some patients may respond very well. Some patients may not respond so well. But uh, it it is always dependent on the response of the patient. But this one is an objective test. It, uh, it means that uh, the response from the patient is not required. We perform the test and we get the results and we can be fairly confident about the accuracy of the test. It is have two types. Impedance audiometry is two types. One is tympanometry and stepedial reflex. Today we will talk about tympanometry. In the next slide, we'll be talking about in the next uh, presentation, we'll be talking about stepedial reflex. Basically, what do we want? Uh, what is the objective? What is the objective? What is the goal of doing tympanometry is we have done an endoscopy. We have taken the history of the patient. We have done the examination. We have done the endoscopy of the patient. We can look uh, with an endoscope or even with a headlight till the tympanic membrane. But we want to know now what is happening behind the tympanic membrane. What is happening in the middle ear? What is happening behind the tympanic membrane? So to find out that one, tympanometry gives a very good, uh, it is, it's a very good uh, instrument to find out what is happening behind the tympanic membrane. The so basically, what is the principle of this test? The principle on which this uh, test stands is when you uh, send an energy or sound uh, through the through this probe and it strikes the tympanic membrane. If the tympanic membrane is stiff, then it reflects more of sound energy. If it is lax or if it is very loose or if it is very compliant, then it reflects less of sound energy. That reflected sound energy is picked up by the microphone. And by changing the pressure in the middle ear, by changing the pressure in the middle ear with the help of an air pump, we can go to minus uh, 200 uh, or minus 400 uh, mm of water to plus 400 mm of water by uh, coming by making the pressure low or high uh, we will be able to match the pressure in the middle ear we'll be able to match the pressure in the middle ear okay when we match the pressure in the middle ear the compliance of this tympano ocular system the mobility of the tympano ocular system can be can be found out okay so this is the basic principle. So sound strikes the tympanic membrane, some energy is absorbed, some energy is reflected. A stiffer tympanic membrane will reflect more of sound energy. And by changing the pressure in a sealed external artery canal. So this is basically a sealed external artery canal. Uh, and by measuring how much of energy is coming back or getting reflected, we can get an idea about what is happening in the middle ear. That is the tympanoscular system. Okay. Now, uh, what uh, what is the instrument that is uh, you, we use in uh, tympanometry? A probe with three channels is passed in the we passed into the external artery canal. So there are three channels. One is an air pump, okay, to bring about changes in the air pressure from uh, minus to normal and then positive pressure changes. We can bring it from minus 400 to plus 200. So here we can see this is the normal atmospheric pressure. Here we are bringing the pressure to minus 400. We can increase the pressure to plus 200 mm of water. And then we have a, uh, a, a system by which we can send a tone of 220 hertz. 220 hertz, uh, this may be asked in the neat PG, okay. A tone of 220 hertz is delivered through the speaker. And then we have a microphone to record the sound that is reflected from the tympanic membrane and the tympanoscular system. Okay, to deliver a tone, pick up the sound and to make the pressure changes. In tympanometry, we measure only two things. One is compliance and one is the, the other is the middle ear pressure. So basically, compliance will be on the x-axis and pressure will be on the y-axis. We will be talking about compliance and middle ear pressure in detail. So what is compliance? What do you mean by the word compliance? Compliance is the ease of mobility of the tympanic membrane. So this is the tympanic membrane and here is the malleus, incus and the stapes. So this is the middle ear. Suppose there is fluid in the middle ear, will the uh, tympanoscular system move uh, as easily uh, when there is no fluid or when there is air in the tympanic membrane? No. So there will be, if there is a fluid, uh, then the tympanoscular system's compliance or ease of mobility of this tympanoscular system will decrease. Okay. Suppose the tympan, the eustachian tube is blocked, there is negative middle ear pressure. Do you think the middle ear uh, tympanoscular system will be functioning so well? Is the compliance well, good 
no compliance will not be good so like that are uh, suppose now there is another another uh, example suppose the there was some head injury and the patient uh, had a dislocation of the malleolus uh, sorry incudo uh, malleolar joint or the uh, incudo stapedial joint there is some dislocation uh, of the incus so will the compliance increase compliance will increase in such such situation so in osculat discontinuity compliance is increased the ease of mobility of the tympanic membrane and the tympano osculat system is increased tympano osculat system is increased and in osculat fixation of fluid in the middle ear or even in eustachian tube uh, uh, block also compliance is decreased the ease of mobility of this tympano osculat system will decrease so basically we want to measure the compliance and this is a very important uh, uh, point to note this is uh, compliance will tell you what is happening in the middle ear next one that we want to measure is the middle ear pressure now how do we measure the middle ear pressure okay now this is the point on which the entire tympanometry stands okay while changing the pressure in the external and auditory canal when we put this air pump and we are changing the pressure from minus to normal and then to positive while changing the pressure in the external auditory canal when the pressure of external auditory canal matches that of middle ear when the pressure in the external auditory canal matches that of middle ear we get maximum compliance and this can be can be easily found out by how much of energy is deflected back okay that is when you find you get the maximum compliance so i'll repeat this while changing the pressure in the external auditory canal okay when the pressure of the external auditory canal matches that of middle ear we get maximum compliance so we keep on saying when do we reach the maximum compliance if there is negative middle ear pressure then the if the pressure in the external auditory canal we are decreasing it and say it coming to minus 200 pressure in the the middle ear is also minus 200 that is where the pressure of the external auditory canal and the pressure of the middle ear match each other that is when we get the maximum compliance okay compliance is the ease of mobility of the tympanic membrane that is when we say when we come to know yeah it has reached maximum compliance at minus 200 it has reached maximum compliance at atmospheric pressure if it has reached maximum compliance at atmospheric pressure we say that the uh, middle ear uh, uh, pressure is normal if it is negative we say the middle ear pressure is negative okay the pressure of the middle ear is regulated by the eustachian tube we all know that okay the, now indirectly what are we measuring we are measuring the function of the eustachian tube okay normal uh, pressure of the middle ear is same as that of atmospheric pressure that is minus 100 to plus 100 mm of water so when it is going below minus 100 that is where the pathology starts if the med, uh, the middle ear pressure is negative beyond this normal range beyond minus 100 then we think that there is eustachian tube blockage that is the only thing that can happen because the pressure in the external artery can have the pressure station tube if there is a station tube blockage the pressure that there will be negative pressure and there also may be fluid build up yeah we'll talk next so now come the equations how do we basically find out what is the disease what is the disease uh, that may be there behind the tympanic membrane there is reduced compliance the ease of mobility of the tympanic membrane has reduced at the same time there is negative middle ear pressure when we reduce the pressure in the external auditory canal we are getting maximum compliance okay so compliance is not what it what is usually there suppose this is the compliance of the tympano osculat system it is not able to reach that peak the compliance is reduced at the same time the compliance we are not able to reach it at zero we have to go negative 200 to reach it so there is reduced compliance at the same time there is negative middle ear pressure these both are there means what uh, negative middle ear pressure means there is eustachian tube blockage means there is some fluid in the middle ear which is not allowing the uh, tympano osculat system to function normally okay now the other other scenario there is reduced compliance the movement of the tympanic membrane the ease of mobility of the tympanic membrane has reduced suppose this is normal this is normal the ease of mobility of the tympanic membrane has reduced but the middle ear pressure is normal but the middle ear pressure is normal that means that there is no fluid in the middle ear okay eustachian tube is functioning normally but still the compliance has reduced what can be the reason 
there is ossicular fixation that it can be otosclerosis it can be tympanosclerosis it can be any kind of ossicular fixation but the eustachian tube is functioning normal so there is no fluid there is no negative middle ear pressure okay so negative middle ear pressure indicates that the eustachian tube is getting blocked which can lead to fluid in the middle ear normal middle ear pressure means the problem is there whatever the problem is there it is not the eustachian tube uh, it is the ossicles okay it is the ossicles or the tympanic tympano, tympanic membrane also may be having uh, sclerosis which is going and fixing the ossicle that also can happen but basically when we say normal middle ear pressure eustachian tube is normal there is no fluid the problem should be with the ossicles okay now this is tympanogram so this is a bit of a confusing topic i will try to go in a bit of detail here so tympanograms by charting the compliance of the tympano ossicular system so we have we have the compliance on the x-axis compliance means the ease of mobility of the tympano ossicular system tympanic membrane and the ossicles by charting the compliance of the tympano ossicular system on one side that is on the x-axis against against the various pressure changes against the various pressure changes that we are bringing about with the air pump okay we are bringing the air pump from negative from negative to uh, normal and then to positive okay when we are bringing by changing the pressure changes whatever graphs we get whatever graphs we get is called the is they are called the tympanograms and these these tympanograms these tympanogram that we get are diagnostic are diagnostic of certain middle ear pathologies so the audiologist is going to say hey, yes then i understand what is the problem the, audio, the audiologist uh, says it is ad i know what is there so basically we have to remember this five one two three four five system and also there will be one more flat curve so there are six types of tympanograms that we have to somehow remember okay what are the types of patterns that we see on the tympanograms type a type a is when there is normal compliance and normal middle ear pressure so this is type a type a when there is normal compliance see the the peak you are reaching the peak the peak is coming nice at the normal range so this is the normal range this is the normal range so it is reaching the peak is reaching normally at the same time the pressure the middle ear pressure is also normal you are not there is no need to decrease the pressure in the external artery canal to get maximum compliance there is no need to increase the pressure in the external artery canal to get normal compliance whatever the normal pressure of the of the atmospheric pressure with that only you are able to get the normal compliance so compliance is normal middle ear pressure is normal as we said we are, we, we only uh test two things compliance and middle ear pressure compliance is normal middle ear pressure is normal so type a type a is normal okay now type a s compliance is decreased compliance is decreased c now it is not able to go to its maximum the ease of mobility of the tympanic membrane that is the compliance has decreased but the middle ear pressure is normal what what is the problem what do, what would be the problem middle ear pressure is normal means there is no problem with the eustachian tube there is no eustachian tube blockage there is no fluid in the middle ear so but there is reduced compliance what is the other thing that is there in the middle ear the ossicles the function of the ossicles the mobility of the ossicles has decreased what could be the problem uh, there is some kind of sclerosis some kind of uh, thing that is preventing the ossicles from moving normally so uh, compliance is decreased but middle ear pressure is normal that is eustachian tube is normal in as yes stands for stiffness stiffness of the tympano ossicular system or tympanic of the ossicles so yes we can also say sclerosis also or we can say stiffness also but basically according to the textbook s stands for stiffness so what are the exam what are the problems that can be uh, when we say as we usually think yeah this is otosclerosis but it but it can be also other ossicular ossicular fixation pathologies like tympano sclerosis okay so in type as the peak is we are not able to reach the peak as a normal this is the normal peak we are not able to reach the normal peak but the peak is coming on the same line as type a that is it is in the normal middle ear pressure normal middle ear pressure means eustachian tube is normal so what is the other problem that can be there that is the ossicular stiffness ossicular sclerosis tympano sclerosis so type a is the peak is reduced but we are having in the midline only that is there is normal middle ear pressure now coming to type ad 
here we can see that the compliance is increased compliance is increased tympanic membrane moves excessively how can that happen tympanic membrane is moving excessively when whatever normal things are there that are present that were giving some kind of uh, resistance to that so that is gone so tympanic membrane is moving very freely tympanic membrane is very moving very freely so here you see the uh, the the uh, ad curve is going up but at some point of time it is going to uh, touch each other so the compliance is very much increased suppose this is a normal compliance the compliance has gone up very much up so the compliance has increased but the pressure is normal middle ear pressure is normal what can what is the possible chances are there there is some discontinuity there is some discontinuity in the tympanoarticular system this subscript d stands for discontinuity middle ear pressure is normal eustachian tube is normal yeah we have already told that it also happens in thin and lax tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane is very very easily mobile maybe it is a case of uh, you know patient had a tympanic membrane perforation it was a case of csom asom sorry acute separative otitis media the infective organism was very strong so it burst through the tympanic membrane and there was a perforation of the tympanic membrane but the patient had a good recovery and the both the uh, the epithelium and endothelium have got healed but there is no middle fibrous layer so there also you can have a thin and lax tympanic membrane thin and lax tympanic membrane also you will get ad so ad is not only articular discontinuity ad can also be because of thin and lax uh, tympanic membrane thin and lax tympanic membrane type c now now this is where it gets a bit confusing till now it was like okay a means normal as means uh, sclerosis ad means discontinuity now comes a little bit of uh, you know you need to be a little bit alert or you need to be understand the concept a little bit in a different way okay so uh, even you know even any 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 medico or any doctor or any human being also we basically think of things as black and white okay eustachian tube is blocked means it is blocked eustachian tube is open means it is open it is not like that okay there is there is a range there is a range so first what happens is okay the patient had a case of acute rhinitis okay this was by some strong organism or the patient did not have a good response good immunity response so it became chronic rhinitis okay then what happened this uh, swelling of the mucosa has gone to the eustachian tube the eustachian tube mucosa has got swollen so now the eustachian tube is starting to get affected so the eustachian tube is starting to get affected but there is no there is a there is a mild negative middle ear pressure but there is no fluid collection at in the middle ear there is no fluid collection it's early closure okay this is early closure there is no fluid there is no fluid in the middle ear then the next stage comes the fluid is present in middle ear but it's not filling it up so this is the middle ear the, there is some fluid there is some air fluid level is there but it's not totally filling the middle ear uh, and the and now he has the patient has not taken any treatment or is resistant to treatment and the eustachian tube is not getting opened and there is more fluid getting collected in the middle ear and the eustachian and the middle ear is completely blocked with the fluid fluid is totally filling the middle ear so these are the various stages that can happen with eustachian tube block eustachian tube is getting blocked first there is only eustachian tube closure closure c closure okay this is what is type c it type c is closure then comes block uh, totally blocked uh, eustachian tube is blocked the fluid is present but not filling it up okay this is type b and then comes a flat curve the fluid is totally filling the middle ear there is the compliance is like gone totally gone the compliance is there is no compliance only compliance the, there is no movement only of the tympanic membrane tympanoarticular system this totally fluid is covering so initially it was eustachian tube blockade there was negative middle ear pressure there was negative middle ear pressure and then uh, there was blockade causing a little bit of fluid with an air fluid level you can say and then it is totally blocked okay so these are the stages so based on those stages you can say that type c here the compliance is normal compliance why is it normal because there is no fluid in the middle ear there is no fluid in the middle ear but to get this compliance to normal you have to bring the pressure to minus 200 at minus 200 the compliance sorry this is the same actually the same line the compliance is normal same as that of normal 
but to, to bring the same compliance you have to reduce the middle ear pressure to minus 200 the middle ear pressure has already started developing minus 200 is definitely is pathological minus 100 to say minus 100 to plus 100 is normal this has become minus 200 minus 200 so negative middle ear pressure has already developed this is seen in early eustachian tube closure as i said not enough fluid to collect subscript c stands for closure subscript c stands for closure okay it is early eustachian tube closure but it is not blocked there is closure but it is not blocked now, that is the greatness of english uh, the eustachian tube is closed but it's not totally blocked now that is the mm, fine line that you have to remember type c what is type c you got a type c uh, is it something else no it is the same disease but it's early type early stages of eustachian tube uh, eustachian tube is just getting blocked so you're having closure so the tympanological system is moving fine perfectly fine but at mid negative middle ear pressure so that becomes type c you also seen in retraction of tympanic membrane retraction of tympanic membrane also there is no fluid the, the tympanic because of negative middle ear persistent negative middle ear pressure the east the, the tympanic membrane is getting a little bit retraction it can be grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 uh, retraction of the tympanic membrane when we come to retraction we will talk about it. so the type c uh, i will again repeat this entire slide so eustachian tube infection there are three stages first stage is eustachian tube is just getting blocked there is no fluid in the middle ear then stage this is this we will see type c then the eustachian tube is continued to getting closed now the eustachian tube has got blocked and the fluid is starting to get collected in the middle ear eustachian tube is getting blocked b b blocked okay here there is fluid and air there is air fluid levels all such things will be there types uh, the last third stage is when the eustachian tube is totally blocked and also the fluid has totally filled up the middle ear okay then there is no compliance then the tympanic membrane will not move only okay now coming to type c now we talked about type b type uh, we talked about type c that is uh, this compliance is the same but at negative middle ear pressure compl we are getting compliance compliance is normal compliance is normal compliance is not reduced compliance is reduced only in as compliance is reduced only in as uh, but middle ear pressure is normal here but compliance is normal compliance is normal at negative middle ear pressure this is the early stage first stage of eustachian tube blocking now comes type c now compliance is decreased compliance is decreased this is the compliance has decreased there is still compliance is there but compliance is decreased it is almost at the level of as okay eustachian tube is blocked for a longer period fluid is present in the middle ear leads to negative middle ear pressure okay negative middle ear pressure that's why we are getting a little bit of bulge at least a little bit of bulge at minus 200 here you have a dome shaped curve reduced compliance with no sharp peak so the compliance is almost at as level there is no sharp peak there is no sharp peak because the tympanic membrane has to move and come back okay tympanic membrane has to move and come back now this is not going to happen when there is fluid you, there will be some movement of the tympanic membrane a dull kind of movement of the tympanic membrane okay so there is no peak in type b there is no peak there is no peak okay in type b there is no peak compliance is decreased because you, you are not able to reach that level compliance is also decreased and there is negative middle ear pressure in type uh, c what did we say compliance is normal compliance is normal but there is negative middle ear pressure compliance is normal but there is negative middle ear pressure in type b there is compliance is reduced and there is negative middle ear pressure so there is no peak so there is no peak and then you have a flat it's not a flat curve but you have a dome shaped curve this is called a dome shaped curve you have a dome shaped curve no peak compliance is reduced the and there is no peak uh, seen in uh, second stage of eustachian tube blockade there there is fluid in the middle ear but it is not totally filling up okay and at the same time there is no full air is also not there in the middle ear okay seen in serous otitis media okay serous otitis blocked eustachian tube you have a type b curve type b curve is diagnostic of serous otitis media okay so the early stage we said eustachian tube blockade uh, eustachian tube blockade we also said retraction of the tympanic membrane means there is no fluid fluid has come in serous otitis media serous has serous otitis media fluid has come serous otitis media type b there is no peak compliance is decreased negative middle ear pressure dome shaped curve with no sharp peak seen in serous otitis media type b 
flat curve when fluid totally fills up the middle layer there is no movement of the tympanic membrane there is absolutely no movement of the tympanic membrane then you have a flat curve so this is a flat curve there is no peak at all a dome shaped curve will come like this okay dome shaped curve will come like this here this is a flat curve okay here you have a flat curve okay you have a flat curve there is no uh there is no peak the compliance also you cannot you cannot call it a dome shape at least there is some movement of the tympanic membrane here there is no movement of the tympanic membrane okay so in the, in the flat curve we see in uh, serous varietis media late stages when it is totally filling the middle layer uh, fluid is totally filling the middle layer you can remember it by the mnemonic f f f f3 okay fluid filled flat curve flat curve is seen in fluid filled middle layer same the serous varietis media is next stage okay flat curve is also seen in tympanic membrane perforations because you cannot build up any pressure only so when there is when you cannot to move the tympanic membrane because there is fluid is totally in the middle layer also you get a flat curve when you cannot build the pressure because of the tympanic membrane perforation also you get a flat curve okay basically in tympanic membrane perforations you cannot perform tympanometry because in external artery canal you put a sealed tube you, you, you know we talked about a sealed tube because we have to increase the pressure reduce the pressure when there is a tympanic membrane perforation there is no chance of you know increasing the pressure if you increase the pressure it go through the eustachian tube if you decrease the pressure the eustachian tube will function and it will bring about uh, normal on both sides okay flat curve is obtained mnemonic flat curve fatta tympanic membrane in hindi fatta means torn okay torn tympanic membrane also you get a flat curve okay eustachian tube function but in tympanic membrane perforations and also in grommet we can uh, assess the uh, eustachian tube function okay in tympanic membrane perforations we can perform the eustachian tube how do we perform the eustachian tube same thing we perform we take the tympanometry probe we seal the external artery canal and we uh, change the uh, pressure from negative to positive from plus 200 to minus 200 we change keep changing it and we bring it to minus 200 and we we ask the patient to swallow for five times in 20 seconds if the pressure is equilibrated to atmospheric pressure following the swallows it means that the eustachian tube is functioning normally this test is basically for for academic purpose i have not seen this test being performed any time uh eustachian but this is a very good way in which you can know the eustachian tube patency eustachian tube function in a case of tympanic membrane perforation what are the chances that your uh, meringoplasty or tympanoplasty will be successful after this but somehow we don't do it on a regular basis also you have placed a grommet grommet and then whether uh, whether uh it's patent or not also we can find out if uh after doing uh, this gestation tube function test by placing a grommet means what you this is external artery canal this is the tympanic membrane you are placing a grommet means this you are placing a ventilation tube the tube is providing a communication between the external artery canal and middle ear what is the grommet doing basically it is taking up the function of the eustachian tube eustachian tube is not able to function properly so you place the ventilation tube so that it will take up its function and let the middle layer mucosa heal after that the grommet falls off and the eustachian tube will be able to pick up its function okay okay so let me just go with the revision of this uh, types of the curves i know this is uh, uh, a bit of uh, you know complicated uh, confusing thing so what is the first one we said type a type a normal compliance normal middle ear pressure normal compliance and normal middle ear pressure okay then we said what type a s the compliance is reduced but the middle ear is normal reduced compliance and normal middle ear pressure seen in s stands for stiffness s stands for stiffness seen in otosclerosis or any kind of ossicular fixation any kind of ossicular fixation we find it then we said type ad ad d stands for discontinuity discontinuity compliance is is, is increased it has gone up suppose this is normal this is gone up okay but the middle ear pressure is normal increased compliance ease of mobility of the tympanic membrane tympanoscular system has increased because there is a discontinuity and normal middle ear pressure d stands for discontinuity seen in ossicular dislocation also thin in thin and lax tympanic membrane 
okay after this come the three stages of eustachian tube function eustachian tube dysfunction first stage is when there is closure type c when there is a eustachian tube is just closed but there is no fluid in the middle ear what happens the compliance is reduced the negative middle ear pressure the middle ear pressure is also suppose this is normal uh, okay compliance is reduced at the same time there is negative middle ear pressure this is the normal a curve at 0 uh, mm of water now you have to go to minus 200 to get a uh, to get a peak but it's not reaching its level so, and also middle ear pressure is reduced so there is reduced compliance and reduced middle ear pressure seen in early stages of eustachian tube dysfunction then comes uh, type B when there is fluid in the middle ear. Okay, you are not able to get a peak only. You are able to get a dome shaped curve. Dome shaped curve. Com you are not able to get a peak. Compliance has reduced. This is the this is the normal compliance. It is coming almost to the level of this AS type curve we said, right? Then the compliance is reduced and there is negative middle ear pressure, but there is no peak seen in serous otitis media. Fluid in the middle ear, but it's not totally blocking, not totally filling the middle ear. Now comes the third time where there is no peak at all. There is a flat kind of curve you get. You get a flat kind of curve, flat kind of curve, fluid filled uh, flat curve, fluid filled flat curve seen in again serous otitis media, but the fluid is totally filling up the middle ear. Okay. So this one, these three things, you keep it in another class, these three things, C, B and F. C, B, F, I hope you can come up with some kind of mnemonic. Uh, C, B, F. Okay. So first stage, second stage, third stage. Flat tympa flat curve is also seen in flat curve is also seen in tympanic membrane perforations. In tympanic membrane perforations, it is not possible to do tympanometry, but you can use to find out the eustachian tube function. Uh, if the patient is able to bring the uh, pressure, uh, you are reducing it to minus two hundred uh, by using an air pump, and if the patient is able to bring it to normal, with five swallows in twenty seconds, then eustachian tube is functioning normally. Also with this in tympanic membrane perforations or even you can find out the Gromet patency okay with this uh, eustachian tube function test when there is uh, Gromet is the same as that of tympanic membrane perforations okay okay thanks for watching please do like comment share and subscribe okay so if possible uh, please try to rate this video in a scale of 1 to 10 where one is like uh, we can't understand we can't understand what what you are telling uh, we are not it's not clear either you are too fast either you are too slow and 10 is when you can go to the exam with only listening to this video and you can you can clear the exam if possible even top the exam okay so can you can you do you feel that after listening to the video can you go and write the exam if if impedance audiometry or tympanometry comes in the exam. Now that would be really nice for you to tell. Thanks for watching.